Hey everybody, this is the iMac 5K review. This is a computer that has photographers drooling with a 14.7 megapixel screen. On paper, it looks fantastic. Well, I've spent several weeks with the computer now, and I can say that in short, for photographers and videographers, this is the best photo editing machine that exists. But there are some severe drawbacks to the computer and some of the things that look great on paper in person really don't make that much difference. And one of those things is actually the screen. I, I expected a little bit bigger of a difference going from the older generation iMac. But when you sit down to it, if the difference is less than you might expect. And I knew if I just said that, I was going to take a lot of flack. And so what I did is... I set up these two computers side by side. One's the, 13, the 2013 iMac with a 3.6 megapixel screen, and the other one is the 14.7 megapixel iMac 5K. And I brought a bunch of people into the office. I'm showing high resolution, super sharp photos on both screens, the exact same file. And I swapped the computers around. I calibrated them so they're exactly alike. And we're going to see if people can tell the difference between 4K or not. I don't think I could find anything that I could point at. It is really close to me. <laughs> they look exactly the same. <laughs> They're very close. This one here. I'll just pick a left. Yeah, it's not that I've spent a time extra money for it. This one is the 5K. I think this one's the one. I like that one. This one grabs my eye just a little bit more. I have no idea. This one looks better to me. So, as you can see from the test, there's a little bit less of a difference than you may expect there to be on paper jumping that much in megapixels. It was less of a difference for me, especially at first. Now that I've been using the screen for a few weeks, I can tell the difference a lot quicker. Almost at a glance, I can tell if I'm looking at the 4K or if I'm looking at the previous generation. Text definitely looks crisper, but for photos themselves, you do have to pay attention which one you're, you're looking to. It's not readily apparent. It's not like game changer. You can't say that even though on paper it looks like it. But I also found the screen uniformity is better in, in terms of brightness, which I tested with a color calibration device. And contrast is significantly punchier in some areas of photos, especially in the mid-tones, you really notice it. So I love the screen, and that's one of the reasons I call it the best photo editing machine ever made. However, there are other things to love, especially the performance. So let's get to that. All right, the performance of the machine. We want to make sure it's going to run fast. Well, first thing, I can start Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere, fire them up all at once in four seconds. It used to be that you'd start Photoshop and then you'd sit back and you'd get this thing showing who made Photoshop, all the creators, all the credits. Yeah, I have no idea who made Photoshop anymore because it just loads right away. So I love seeing that. And the, few, the SSD that I got on the new machine is significantly faster than the, the Fusion Drive that I had on my previous generation iMac. Cinebench scores 102 frames per second on the new uh, iMac 5K, but there are some problems too. Rebooting the new iMac 5K, 47 seconds. Uh, that's about twice as slow as the previous gen generation. Um, and that kind of shows not the power of the machine, but just that there are bugs still in the iMac 5K, how it's working with the operating system and other programs. I've seen a lot of spinning beach balls lately, but I really do believe that those are things that are going to be worked out over the coming months. For photographers, you really don't have to spec out your machine to do what we do. I would say there's kind of a certain acceptable minimum where the programs just aren't going to work well until you get to a certain point, Photoshop and Lightroom. 
but once you get to a certain point in your configuration, you really start to see diminishing returns. You know, going from 16 to 32 uh, gigs of, of RAM isn't gonna make as much of a difference as you probably think it will. Um, you know, going from changing your video RAM, video RAM to from two to four, not gonna make a ton of a difference. Uh, but, for, but for me personally, I do a lot of video as well, and that's where I like to see that, uh, that increased performance. So uh, I, I would say overall, it's a great performer. It performs better on some of the benchmarks than even the Mac Pro, but do be aware of a couple bugs that are out there. If you are going to, to buy an iMac 5K, don't buy all the RAM from Apple. You're gonna waste money. I got mine from crucial.com. For $300, I got 32 gigs of RAM, uh, which would have cost me 600 if I had bought it from Apple. A savings of 300 bucks just for spending 25 seconds left-handed and my left arm's like a club to install the RAM. It's really easy to do, so definitely save that way. The design and usability of the iMac 5K is fantastic. I was coming from Windows World when I bought my iMac, iMac 2013 and I was just blown away with how beautiful it is. Uh, it's five millimeters thin on the edges so it gives the impression of just being super thin. Usability, however, is sometimes a different story. Often we find with Apple that they put design a little bit above usability and the port placement is an example of that. When I put, want to put an SD card in, I've got to reach behind the computer and slip it in. And for a few months, I, it was just too crazy. I had to stand up, move the computer, slip my SD card in there every time I wanted to put photos in. It was a mess. And so I got a separate card reader and I got a USB hub to hang down so it was easier to plug things in and out. Uh, but eventually I did get the hang of it and now I can one hand it uh, just okay. The number of ports are fair, but there are some things that I would like to see as a media cre creator. There is an SD card slot, which actually works pretty quickly. Um, there's a headphone port. There are two Thunderbolt 2 ports upgraded from Thunderbolt, the original on the previous generation iMac. Four USB 3 ports. I would like to see like six with how many that I, that I use for different things. And of course, Ethernet and your Kensington lock as well. But I do love Thunderbolt using it with my Drobo 5D. I just get such incredible speeds with it that I love it when I'm editing videos. I don't even bother to take it from the hard drive over to, uh, or I don't even bother taking it from the Drobo over to the hard drive to edit the video. I can edit the video straight from the Drobo over Thunderbolt and it's plenty fast. I love that and it works great for my workflow for that reason. So that's the design of the, of the computer. If you haven't sat in front of one, it really is an experience and it's tough to give up once you've had it. So that's the design. Now, final conclusions of the machine. I love the iMac 5K. Uh, it's definitely one that I'm keeping. I'm calling it the best photography editing machine that exists anywhere in the world. Although there are some drawbacks that we talked about. There's some bugginess, the screen isn't as big of a change as it looks like on paper and you really gotta pay a lot about uh it's about the cost of a 5d mark III, i guess we might say to get the photo editing computer but if it's in your budget it is awesome thanks for joining me on this review now check out the full review at improvephotography.com slash imac 5k see ya it looks exactly like my old screen no this isn't it that's not good.